Americans are feeling like strangers in a strange land. Sadly, it's becoming more challenging every day to recognize our own country. Listening to the Midnight Sentinel will help us make sense of the craziness we're seeing and hearing about all around us. We need patriots and Christians who are willing to stand up for the values that made our nation great. Are you ready to be a Sentinel? Here's J.D. Rucker. Our next guest began airing a television program named It's Supernatural all the way back in 1996. Each week on television, he investigates and reports on people who have experienced extraordinary healings, miracles, and personal encounters with God. At the end of each program, he tells his viewers how they can achieve this intimacy with the living God. We are very blessed, pleased, and honored to have the great Sid Roth joining us today. Sid, how are you doing, sir? I am I'll tell you what, I have been on such a fast track today. I haven't had a chance to say, self, how are you doing? <laughs> but uh, but then, no, I'm doing well. Thank you, JD, how about you? I'm doing great. You know, I've had some great conversations about the Bible lately, and I know that this one is going to be another fantastic one. We are living in a world that is so full right now of negativity. The adversary is trying to pit us against each other. Give, give me some good news. Tell me what's what's coming because we we've all read the Bible. Most of my audience has. We know that there that how it ends. We know that that we win. But give us something now. What can we look forward to today, Sid? Have I got some good news for you? I have been given insight based on the Word of God and the Spirit of God of the next, the last. And the greatest move of God's spirit in history. And as a matter of fact, a, a Jewish prophet by the name of Isaiah described it. And he said it will occur at a time, depending on the translation, of deep darkness. And you just described where we're at right now. Uh, and uh, it, it's I, I will tell you this, it'll be different than anything God's ever done before. And if you try to put God in your religious box, <laughs> you'll miss the whole thing. Well, as I call it the glory of God revival. Now, the glory of God, uh, Moses started talking about it, and we saw the glory in his life based on the Bible. Uh, the glory of God. He he said to uh, God one day, God, show me your glory. And God used a synonym. He didn't use the word glory in his answer. He said, I will have my presence appear before you. My goodness, my goodness was the actual word he used. I will have my goodness you see, a lot of people have a lot of adjectives for God, but I like the description God gave himself, his goodness. He is a good God. And, and, and I could talk forever about how good he's been in my life. And does that mean he makes you a millionaire and you don't have a problem? No, that's science fiction. But does that mean that if you have defeated the fear of death, if you know you're not alone in this life, if you know there is a book written in heaven according to the Bible called the Book of Life, and your whole life is written out, and this is what I know, everything in that book is good, everything. There's no bad things in that book. God did not will the bad things. They do happen. Bad things happen to good people. However, that wasn't God's will. On this side of heaven, we've got an imperfect world with imperfect people and an imperfect devil. You want perfection? Come on, give me a break. But the goodness of God, no matter what happens in your life, if you can just remember, I'll tell you what happens to me. 
I go all over the world and I give lectures on the supernatural. I happen to be Jewish, and to the chagrin of most rabbis that come into contact with me and talk to me, uh, they say, are both of your parents Jewish? Because the, in their mentality, they say, no one that was a real Jew could believe in Jesus as the Messiah. And I understand, I understand why they think that way. Well, look, the devil is a master strategist, and his checkmate is the salvation of Israel. It's all over. It's curtains. Why do you think little Israel, the size of Rhode Island, is in the center of the news of every newspaper in the world? It's a tiny nothing when you look at the map of the world, because the stakes are so high with Israel. The stakes are so high for the salvation of Israel. So anyway, when I go into a, a, a country like Israel or Ukraine or Russia or Boca Raton, Florida, or any area that heavy Jewish population, I run ads, lecture on the supernatural. Why? Because my rule book says that the Jews require a sign. So therefore, the first church had signs and wonders. Even those that don't believe in signs and wonders for today recognize the last church is going to have signs and wonders. Uh, so why did God stop? Especially the God that says, I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't, I don't get it. So like I don't get an atheist who says there's no God. I mean, I, I would love to have an intelligent conversation with an atheist and tell me how your brain evolved. Oh, you mean you could take the parts of a watch and shake it in a shoebox for a million years and it would come out ticking? No, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. But J.D., I give these lectures all over the world. I'll have as many as 1,000, 1,200, 1,300. Well, in Israel, I'll have like 1,300 Jewish people, Israelis, that have never heard word one of the gospel. Nothing. And all I do is I stand up there, and I'm headed towards a point. I stand up there, and I start speaking. And when I speak, the goodness or the glory or the presence, all synonyms for the same word, the goodness or the glory or the presence of God invades the room, and a high percentage of Jewish people that do not believe in Jesus are healed in his name. And once they're healed, I have their undivided attention. Once I have their undivided attention, if someone were to just, just take the religion and put it in a shoebox and shake it for a million years, just listen to what I say that the Bible says, and it's so good, and it's and, and God is really, you see, my big issue, J.D., with Jews and with Christians and with Muslims is very, they all have good religions, depending on one's definition of good. They all have good religions. They all want to accomplish good. Forget the terrorists. They all want to accomplish good. Some of the nicest people I've ever met are Muslims. Um, however, they don't, they have religion, but they don't have the whole purpose of religion. They've missed the boat. They think the purpose of religion is if I join this church, I'm going to go to heaven someday and I want to live a basically moral good life. Uh, that's what they think. No! The purpose of a religion is to tell each one of us how we can have our own experiential knowledge with God. And once we have that experiential knowledge, you could put a sword at my throat and said your head or convert to, to my religion. And I'd say, you're telling me that's not much of a deal you're giving yourself. Heaven? No devil, no sickness, no fear, no worry, no depression, no, no um, terrorism. Oh, they, you, what, you're, you think that's a threat? Come on now. I'm like Paul. I, look, I'd rather be in heaven. But for your sake, for your sake, I'll stay here a little while longer. And that's the way I feel. I am 81 years young. I am busier than I've ever been in my life, 
and people think, uh, well, you're 81, you should be getting your uh, replacement in line and you should uh, be uh, maybe uh, uh, relaxing a little. They don't understand. My relaxation is doing what I'm doing right now with you, J.D. That's my relaxation. That's my passion. Why wouldn't I want to, if, I, if, if golf or fishing was my passion, why wouldn't I want to be golfing or fishing? I want to tell people because, like, I, I, I went to an eye doctor this afternoon uh, before the interview with you. And I'm talking to the woman and she says she's Catholic, and, but she's not into religion. And I start talking the way I'm talking to you. And I'm going to tell you something. It was like a person dying of thirst and drinking. So I have these meetings in countries that have large Jewish populations. They're packed with Jewish people. I don't mince words, even in the ad. I say I'm a Messianic Jew, a Jewish believer that the Messiah has already come. His name is Yeshua, which is Hebrew for Jesus. So there's no deception of any sort. But the, the urge for miracles is so great, same as the first church, is so great, someone from what they consider another religion wants a miracle. They don't want the religion, but they want the miracle. And so a high percentage get instantly healed in their seat. I don't lay hands or any religious thing. It's because I can't heal anyone. I wish I could, but I can't. But when God shows up, J.D., people are healed all over the auditorium. And I have to tell you, it's between you and me, you won't tell anyone. Okay. <laughs> I have trepidation every time. God, if you don't show up, I mince make. I have promised that what miracles and I can't heal anyone. <laughs> so, so JD, that miracles occur. And then I say, would you like to meet the God that just demonstrated miracles? And like 90% stand up and make public professions of faith, even in the land of Israel. So don't tell me Jewish people aren't open to the gospel. Muslim people aren't open to the gospel. People are so open right now. In fact, I'll tell you something else, that uh, uh, this, this glory that is coming, if you just study the Old Testament about the glory of God, do you know in the glory, in the wilderness, we had our food taken care of, we had our water taken care of, our clothes did not run out, there wasn't one feeble person can you picture 70-year-olds, uh, 90-year-olds walking in the desert in that hot sun? But it wasn't that hot. They had a cloud over them. I mean, you talk about modern technology. I'll take the glory cloud any day over modern technology. Uh, at night, they had no electricity. So what does God do? A pillar of fire up there. Uh, it, uh, I, I mean, it, Moses lived to 120, it says even his eyesight wasn't fading in, that, in the presence of God. Joshua, he lived to 80, and he was a strong, the day that, uh, uh, that he, uh, uh, at, uh, I, I'm sorry, he was at str as strong as 80, at 80, as he was at 30. He would go out to battle. That's in the glory. We're not going to have to, you know, we're not going to have to run to a healing evangelist if we're in the glory. Why? God is the healer. God's going to do it all. And, uh, and the, the thing that will make this move of God's spirit so different, J.D., is it's all hands on deck. That means you, J.D., that means everyone watching us or, or listening to us right now, that means you, because you're not going to do it. What's the best preparation to, to have the glory? The best preparation I know is to be a grateful man or woman, is to be so thankful for the goodness of God. It's, it's a heart attitude. And when you have the right heart, I, in fact, you have viewers right now that have been fed a bill of goods that if they're a member of a particular denomination or religion, uh, uh, then they have a free ticket to heaven. Well, I'll tell you what, 
They still don't know for sure, even though the religion tells them that. There's only one way you're going to know for sure this side of heaven, and that is to have your own experience with God through Jesus. Now, I, as a, coming from an Orthodox Jewish background, it would take the glory of God for me to move into this. And you know what? The day I became a believer in Messiah, I was flooded with the presence of God. J.D., you have friends, and our viewers have friends, and I have friends and family that I wish would know God, and they don't. They're so far away from God, they don't even know how far away they are. But they are, and there's no hope for them. None. It's sort of like a Democrat feels about a Republican, or a Republican feels about a Democrat, or a Black might feel about a white, or a white might feel about a Black, or a radical Muslim. You know, you know all these divisions. Well, there's a, God's got an answer in a time of this great darkness. His glory is going to fill the earth. It's going to flood the earth. And the best way I know is read the Bible every day and say, Holy Spirit, if I am wrong in some area, if I haven't forgiven someone that I should, and there's lots of people that don't deserve forgiveness, I might add, but Jesus said, I'll forgive you the same degree you forgive other people. J.D., how much you want to be forgiven? I want to be forgiven 100%. It's not like ivory snow. It's not 99% and you get to heaven. No, you're either righteous or you're not righteous. And you can't do a thing to earn your righteousness. If you could do it, you wouldn't need God. God, J.D., I, I get excited, but God is brilliant. He's brilliant. He's good. I don't understand why the whole world isn't running to him. And they will in the glory. You're worried. Your viewers are worried about COVID. And rightfully so. I have two friends this week that died from COVID. But you know what? They both knew Jesus. I know where they are. They're better off than you and me or both of us put together right now. Not that I want to die. I mean, I, I, I feel... I, you know, maybe I'm a little Miss Sugar. If you heard that word, it's a Hebrew word. It means crazy. May, maybe I'm a little Miss Sugar, but I want to be here to see the greatest harvest of souls in history. It's going to be the greatest and the least likely. Some of the children of the people viewing you right now, they're into drugs, so they're into a crazy belief system. I mean, there's no hope, none, J.D., for the people uh, that are so divided. I don't care. There's no hope except God. And even with God, under the last move of God's Spirit, as good as it was, there's no hope for these people. But this new move is going to be something that you and I have never seen before. When someone prophesies, that means they speak on behalf of God, there will not be, it's like Samuel the prophet, not one word will fall to the ground without it happening. When someone prays for someone, everyone's going to get healed. I mean, it's television. You better, you, you better be ready to revamp everything. If you're not displaying what God is doing, you, 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 don't, you don't have any news. Watch what happens on the secular news. People will be interviewed because there's a cloud over them. I mean, if they get so crazy over oh, Meshuggah, over flying saucers and stuff like that, how about walking around with a cloud of God's goodness and glory that no devil in hell can penetrate, no sickness, no COVID can penetrate, uh, no worry? It's impossible to worry in that cloud. Who wouldn't want that, J.D.? <laughs> uh, it, it, you know the story of Adam and Eve from the Bible. Everyone knows that story, no matter what their background. Well, Adam and Eve, before they fell, lived in the glory. You know, to me, another name for the glory of God is the atmosphere of heaven. Uh, have you ever seen people with an apnea mask? They put it on when they go to sleep. Well, you'll have a built-in apnea mask of the presence of heaven. How many germs are going to live in that? We won't have to look for alternative solutions for COVID. COVID won't even be in our vocabulary. Now, there'll be a big division. 
because you think there's division now? The big division will be those that know God and those that don't. Not those that go to religion or not. That's got nothing to do with it. That's like, what flavor pie do you want? Apple or cherry? Who knows? You know, I like both myself. But uh, but that's just that that that's relig- religion. You either know him or you don't, and there won't be this lukewarm. And that's what I would call Christianity, at least in America, is lukewarm. And you know, a famous rabbi said, I, "I'd rather you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll actually." In, in the uh, Greek, it said, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. I don't want to be vomited out of God's mouth. But um, I, I feel that people have heard enough right now. With your permission, J.D., I would like to pray for everyone for two things. Number one, they have their own experience with God. I'm not saying believe in him. That would be good. I would, you know, I wish you would, but I'm not saying that. I'm saying open yourself up to your own experience with God. And I'm saying I'm going to, I would like to pray a supernatural prayer. That glory of God came on me. I'm kind of like a forerunner of it. Nothing compared to what's coming. Nothing. And I, I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, what's com- I have a, a thimble full of the glory of God. The ocean is coming. In fact, let me, let, and let me read this, and then I'm going to pray that prayer um, with uh, everyone. Let's see here. Uh, Isaiah, I was talking about Ishiahu. Uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, deep darkness the peoples. But, I love that but. But the Lord shall rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you, and nations shall come to your light. Kings, do you know, J.D., every government in the world will hire a prophet to find out what God says they should do. They won't make decisions on polls of people who don't know the left hand from the right hand. They'll make decisions on what God has to do. Um, I mean, the days are going to be so good. Uh, and then Habakkuk says in chapter 2, verse 3 and 14, for the vision, and this was written many years back, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. It's for now, right now, by the way. Uh, but it speaks of the end and does not lie. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And I want to pray this prayer with your permission. And I, I wouldn't mind, I'll say the prayer, and J.D., if you'll repeat it after me, and every viewer, if you'll repeat it when J.D. repeats it. Um, uh, and who wouldn't want their own encounter with God? I'm not saying believe because I tell you to believe. That's good that he believes, but, you know, I'm I'm from Missouri. I'm on the scenes believing. Well, you're ready to see? Good. You're about ready to. Repeat this prayer after me, out loud. Very important, out loud, because the whole world was created with the spoken word of God. So everything changes for the better or the worse with with our spoken words. So repeat this after me. Dear God. Dear God. I've made many mistakes. I've made many mistakes. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I believe. I believe. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Washes away all of those mistakes. Washes away all of those mistakes. And as of this minute. And as of this minute, I'm clean. I'm clean. And now that I'm clean. And now that I'm clean. I ask you, Jesus. I ask you, Jesus. To come and live inside of me. To come and live inside of me. And not just keep me clean through your righteousness. And not just keep me clean through your righteousness. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. To make you my Lord. 
to make you my Lord. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. And let me experience your glory. And let me experience your glory. The same glory that Moses experienced. The same glory that Moses experienced. The same glory that Paul experienced. The same glory that Paul experienced. I love you, God. I love you, God. I must know you better. I must know you better. Amen. Amen. Wonderful prayer, sir. Wonderful prayer. And that is, it is extremely important, as you said, those, the spoken word is important, as is the importance of prayer within groups. It is the prayers we, we all pray, well, hopefully. Most of us pray by ourselves, but we also need to pray in groups, whether it's just with our, our friends, our spouse, our family. We need to be able to pray together because when prayers are within groups, they are magnified. And so this is very important that, you know, if you didn't, if you listen to that prayer spoken by Sid Roth, repeated by me, and you didn't repeat it, I would encourage you, push the rewind button. That's the beauty of technology. Go back and speak it out loud with us because it is an important prayer. And this is a time when we need to, as believers, we need to express this, our love and ask for the forgiveness that is, we don't deserve, but that we desperately need for our eternal souls. Yeah, Sid. JD, I have one more thing, if you could give Please. me the time. Oh, you, okay. you've got all day, brother. The presence of God is all over your set, all over people's computers or TVs or however they're watching this. And in God's presence, all things are possible. And while we were speaking, I know that God is healing pneumonia. Perhaps it's someone that um, has COVID, but God is healing pneumonia right now. Elbows are being healed right now. Backs and necks and hips, all joint problems. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. In his glory, his intensity is getting stronger now. I thank you, God. Oh, you're so good. We're so undeserving. It's not false humility. It's coming to our senses. You're so good, God. Anything I haven't said, you just reach out into that invisible realm. Because according to Ishiahu Isaiah chapter 53, the most graphic description of the Messiah of Israel written 800 years before he came to earth as a physical man. It actually says in the Hebrew, he not only bore on himself our sins, but he carried our pains and our diseases. All pain, all disease is gone. Just reach in and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, JD, for being such a marvelous host to me and your program. Thank you, Sid Roth, for coming on with us. And we will definitely, definitely have you on again. Lord willing, we will be back very soon with another episode. But in the meantime, you all stay strong, stay safe, and God bless.